This video is designed to help you use decision trees or probability trees um, to find the probability of an event happening. Um, so we've got a, a series of problems here that it can, where we have a bag containing some marbles. In this case, three red marbles and one yellow marble. What we'd like to know is if you take two marbles out of the bag, what's the probability that the two marbles will match in color? So you can list um, everything that can happen here, um, and we'll do that um, briefly here just to kind of see what, what that list looks like, and then we'll look at the tree to compare it. So if you think of each of the marbles as distinct, the red 1, red 2, and red 3, you can get red 1 and red 2, you can get red 1 and red 3, and you can get red 2 and red 3 and those would be all the ways that so there are three ways and those would be the ways where they match um, and of course the other three things that can happen in this case are that you get red 1 and the yellow you get red 2 and the yellow and you get red 3 and the yellow and of course that's three ways that they don't match three ways not matching now this is fine to do oftentimes making the list is fairly easy to do if the events are small and not um, if there aren't a lot of marbles with a lot of mix-up um, what this would tell you if there's three ways the way they match and three ways where they don't match um, excluding the order in which you've drawn them um, you're going to get 50-50. So that means it's 3 out of 6 that they match versus 3 out of 6 that they don't match. So it's a 50-50 uh, event. Um, so if this were, f uh, for example, um, a fun game that you were playing against um, the other person, a little betting game or some dice, you know, some, some game just for fun, um, this would be a fair game because um, after you pick the two marbles out, it would be 50% chance that you won and 50% chance that your opponent won. Um, let's take a look at what the tree will look like because in more complicated events, the tree is a more useful way of um, predicting what's going on. So to get red or yellow. So what we're doing is we're saying it's three quarters of the time with that first draw and now we'll pretend order matters um, and that there's an order in which you draw them out um, just for the sake of making each uh, event equally likely and so that we can look at what happens um, in the second draw because obviously the number of marbles remaining in the second draw um, is one less, and so the, the probabilities um, change depending on what you drew the first time. So this decision tree allows us um, to look at it in this way. So three quarters of the time you're going to get red, and one quarter of the time you're going to get yellow on that first one. If you drew a red on that first draw, then two thirds of the time you will get a red again, and one third of the time uh, excuse me, you will get a yellow. And what that means is the probability that we went down this path is going to be three quarters times two thirds. We can use the multiplication principle because we know the probability of each step here. So three quarters times two thirds is going to give us one fourth or uh, two fourths, excuse me, or one half. So that agrees with what we got in our list. So half the time you're going to get both reds. And of course, the other options are both um, not matching because if you get a red and then a yellow, that's going to happen three quarters times one third or one quarter of the time. And, of course, if you drew a yellow first, then it's 100%. And we're going to write 100%, but you could write 
um, three out of three, for example, since there are three red marbles left, it's 100% that the next draw is a red, and of course that means that one quarter of the time you're going to get the yellow first and then the red. And of course one quarter plus one quarter, because these two events are mutually independent of each other, um, and you may add them, and therefore it's going to be a half versus a half, Okay, so once again, we're looking at a 50-50 proposition. So let's take a look at some variations with different uh, numbers of marbles and see how um, we can apply the tree again. So now we have a bag that contains two red marbles and one yellow marble. So what's the probability that you're going to get the two red marbles out of the bag um, when you do this? So you might argue that you can make this list again, but I'm not going to worry about it. There is only one way to get two red marbles, um, ignoring order. So if you're making the list, of course, that means you get the two red marbles, and that's it. So let's take a look at the decision tree in this case, and um, the probability tree, rather, and let's see what that looks like if we assume we take the first marble out and figure the probability, of course, is two-thirds that you're going to draw red on the first marble and one-third that you're going to draw yellow. If you draw the yellow, it's 100% that you get a red out on the second one. If you draw a red, it's 50-50 because there's one of each color left that you're going to get a red marble or a yellow marble. Um, so if you got two reds, that would be two-thirds times one-half, and of course two-thirds times one-half is one-third of the time, and if you got um, a red and then a yellow, that's going to happen two-thirds times one-half as well, so that's going to be one-third of the time. And, of course, one-third times 100% is one-third of the time. And, of course, these two events right here add together to give you two-thirds. So two-thirds of the time, they're not going to match. You're going to get a yellow and a red. And one-third of the time, they will match, and you'll get two reds. So that kind of matches your intuition, probably, that um, with two red marbles and one yellow marble, um, you know, it seems unlikely that, that in those drawing two out that you won't get the yellow, um, which would be, mean that you wouldn't match. So, of course, uh, that does match our sort of intuition that it's unlikely that you're going to get both the red marbles, so surely it seems like more likely that you'll get one, uh, uh, the yellow marble in one of the two draws. And as it turns out, that's exactly what would happen. Um, and you can argue this other ways, but right now we're just focused on looking at the decision tree or the probability tree. So let's take a look at another couple of examples. So here's another example of the bag, and now it's containing a considerably more complicated um, pile of marbles in it. It has five red marbles and two yellow marbles. So what is the probability, again, that the two marbles will match in color? Um, and so let's take a look at this decision tree. Now, of course, making this list is getting significantly messier, and yet doing it with the decision tree or the probability tree is, um, once again, fairly straightforward. So it's five-sevenths because there are seven total marbles, and five of them are red, that you get a red. And of course, that means it's two-sevenths with the first marble that you get a yellow. Once you've drawn a red one, then of course there are only six marbles left, and now it's four out of six, um, and I'm going to just write that as four out of six. You could write it as two-thirds, uh, and that would be fine, but I'm going to write it as four out of six, just to stay consistent with the denominators here. Um, and, of course, then with the uh, yellow, there's two out of six left. So you could write that as one-third, but I'm going to write it as two-sixths. And if you drew a yellow on the first one, 
one less yellow, that means there's five out of the six marbles are going to be red. So it's five six chance that you're going to get red. And of course, if you drew the yellow, it's there's only one yellow left, so it's one out of six, and that's why I kept the six as the denominator because those fractions don't reduce. And now you have your decision tree or probability tree for what can happen in this case. So five sevenths times four six, five sevenths times four six, okay, is going to be twenty over forty two, and of course that could reduce down as well and at the end we could look at that if we want to but it really doesn't matter and on this one you're gonna get 10 um, I did write it as two-thirds even though I meant to not write it as two-thirds it's two-sixths excuse me uh, let me uh, do a little erasing here that's gonna be two-sixths um, sorry about that and so this is gonna be 10 over 42 and right here you're going to get also 10 over 42 and right here you're going to get 2 over 42. Now of course the ones that where you have a matching um, pair of marbles are right here with two reds and right here with two yellows which is now possible. And so what this says, if we add those two together, if we add them together, we're going to get uh, 22 over 42, or 11 over 21, as the probability that you're going to get two matching marbles. This is very close to 50%, but not exactly. So it would be if you were playing a game with this, it would slightly favor the person um, with, uh, who was hoping to get matching marbles, um, whereas the other person would win, for example, if you got nothing else. Um, of course, you can add the other two um, probabilities, 10 40 seconds and 10 40 seconds. If you add those, you get, of course, 20 40 seconds and 20 40 seconds reduces to 10 elevenths and of course those should add up at uh, 10 21sts excuse me um, and of course if you add those um, together you should get uh, 21 20 seconds and you do notice so you're accounting for hundred percent of what can happen so there's another um, decision or probability tree for looking at a slightly more complicated situation Finally, here's a situation where it looks like, oh, this should be fair. There's four red marbles and four yellow marbles. So it must be fair. It's probably fair that you get um, matching marbles or not matching marbles. But it doesn't turn out to match your, tuition in, uh, your intuition in this case. Um, so let's take a quick look at what we have. If you draw a red or a yellow, the red is obviously 50-50, one half, and the yellow is obviously 50-50 and one half. And of course, there's kind of a nice breakdown. If you drew a red the first time, then it's three-sevenths that you draw a red, and four-sevenths that you draw a yellow. And if you drew a yellow the first time, it's four-sevenths that you draw a red, and three-sevenths that you draw a yellow. And of course, what we're seeing is that it, once you've drawn a color, it's more likely that you draw the other color in the second, in the second draw. And um, so that actually is going to skew the probability. If you multiply this together, you get 3 fourteenths. If you multiply this together, you get 4 fourteenths. Multiply this together, you get 4 fourteenths. And if you multiply this together, you get 3 fourteenths. And of course, the ones that match are the 3 fourteenths and the 3 fourteenths, which add up together to give you 6 fourteenths, or 3 sevenths probability. And the ones that don't match add up together to give you 8 fourteenths, or 4 sevenths of the time. And that kind of matches this idea that 
it's four sevenths in that second draw, so it's more likely in that second draw you're going to get a non-matching one than a matching one. I hope that this, um, these examples of probability trees uh, will help you uh, be able to examine similar situations with you know, three sets of marbles or three draws. You would simply do three levels of, um, of uh, the probability tree. Um, and with more marbles, you have to have more options at each one, so it gets more complicated. Uh, if you have different colors, uh, like three different colors, maybe red, blue, and yellow, and so forth. But you should be able to work out uh, very similar kinds of process. At each level, you should be able to say, what's the probability of getting a blue marble, a red marble, and a yellow marble? I hope this has helped.